morning program, Rowan Hand. Uh, I'm delighted to welcome. Uh, I've got Anne Mason with me this morning Morning. from STEM, which is... uh, Sustainable Together Through Environmental Management. Sustainable Together Through Environmental Management. And it's about leadership in sustainable development for business and industry. And I've discovered something here that I surprised Anne with already. (laughs) It's the rags and ragas from Cecil Regendra, my poet of Malaysia. And this is, this about sums it up, maybe. Let me read this to you, may I? And yes, to please. you. Prologue. Our inheritance, and we are talking about inheritance, aren't we, in Absolutely, sustainable yeah. development. Our inheritance, a, mass, a, a mantle of cascading emerald spun from a thousand threads of regal green, a mantle which once adorned our mother from shoulder to ankle, a robe befitting a queen. But a gift unappreciated, abused, neglected, Ochre stained and pitted, torn and tattered in threadbare pieces fragmented, all that remains of that mantle to bequeath our children, a bedraggled legacy of rags. God forbid. That about sums it up. Yeah, we must make sure that we bequeath our children an awful lot more than that. Now, your your STEM project, what's the provenance of STEM and how did it... How does um, it all come about? We originated um, about 10 years ago and it's, uh, it has always been an interreg, an, a European funded project. Thank God for Europe. Absolutely. Absolutely, um, yes. And we were very successful in 2004. We received funding from interreg 3A yeah, yeah. at that time. Did you see the RTE nationwide programme last night on Intertrade Ireland? Based in Newry they are, and Mary Kennedy came up to Newry, did a magnificent programme on what Intertrade Ireland is doing across the whole, uh, the whole island, mm-hmm. bringing in development, bringing in jobs to Ireland. They're fantastic. And that's all flowing out in your area, you know. Yeah. So well, it's the same kind of thing. I believe thing. The, you know, the STEM project really does demonstrate the, you know, the impact that European money has on our local economy and our businesses, you know, because yes. it's, it's shown you know, how that money can make a difference to these businesses. So what STEM is doing is actively you know, going into these businesses and showing them ways in which they can save money on their energy, their waste and their water. And particularly you know, now is a time when they really need that help and support. Mm. So you know, we have been leaders in sustainable development because we are um, really showing these businesses the way and how they can reduce the impact their organisation has on our environment. Right. Is I certainly know, I remember, uh, I've done, with Nationwide, I've done a number of programmes that have given, have bor- borne fruit in this regard. And, uh, you know, I see people like FM Systems in Newry, they have a system that recovers grease from yeah. water in kitchens across mm-hmm. the land. And it's the simplest of things. The, mm-hmm. the grease floats on water, the grease comes to the top, the spinning wheel scoops it off and gets rid of it, you know. Yeah. Are people, if not, if not totally proficient in the ways of sustainability and good practice, are people at least aware of the need that they should be so? Yeah, they, they absolutely are. And that is, it's really rewarding to see that when you go into a business and they really want to be making a difference and they really want to um, show some corporate responsibility there as well. Um, they do understand by doing this, you know, when you do look at your energy and you do look at trying to reduce those impacts, you do make a saving and um, that is a good business case to do it as well. And um, we do have the, the likes of FM Environmental on our, on oh, our you know project. Them. Oh yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And we have a lot of those businesses that have offered solutions or can offer solutions to the businesses and we are there to try and um, help those businesses um, form partnerships, relationships, and bring that those solutions to the businesses, making it very much um, an easier mm. journey for them. You, you, um, won a, you won a, you got some award recently. Yes. We've Tell us about your great award. We've been very successful in the last while. We won um, uh, the Leadership and Sustainable Development Award, and that was, um, it was a great boost for our project. We're a team of nine, and... Where are you based? We're based up in Armagh, but we yeah. work across... Um, we're cross-border projects. We yeah. work across all the council areas. Mm. Um, when you say all acro- across all the council areas, are those are those councils that are contiguous to the border, um, or would you work with Kerry Council? Well, we logistically it could be problematic ah, yeah, yeah, for us, yeah, but yeah, yeah. we see that there is potential in a project like ours to roll out across the island of Ireland. Mm. You know, there is a demand out there. 
We originally were working with 11 councils and we've had interest from a further 10 councils and yes. if we can help them and if wow. logistically we can get to them, we will help them. One of the, one of the great environmental projects that I know in Ireland and that I've done some work on through, again, Nationwide, uh, and I'm so privileged to tell you about this project and uh, I'm also saddened to tell you of the death of one of the great uh, progenitors of the of the uh, it's Shabra Plastics in oh, yes. Oliver Brady and Rita Shah and we greet you this morning Rita because Rita lost Oliver her business partner and dear friend and soulmate and they were in horse training and uh, mm -hmm. Oliver was such a wonderfully in innovative and inventive man he designed the systems of recycling for mm -hmm. Shabra that bring in plastic waste from all over the island of Ireland, from every council area in Ireland, bring their waste to Monaghan, to Shabra, and that's there at the, at the hand of Oliver Brady, and such good, good people, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I, my whole awareness over the last 10 years has led me to understand and to see that there is a movement now towards... Mm -hmm wise use of energy and wise practices. It wasn't that way 20 years ago. No. I think we are becoming more aware and you know the STEM project are very much about trying to bring that awareness to the businesses. Um, we would do a lot of networking sessions and you know they're a fantastic opportunity mm. for the businesses to, to get to speak, to share best practice with each yes. other. We would bring them into you know large organisations they may not have had an opportunity to mm -hmm. knock the door on. You know, for example, we have had best practice visits to IKEA, to the King Spans of this world, to um, a number. We're, we're hopefully doing one in Croke Park. So you know, wow. but they, there's learnings there to be had for all the businesses, mm. even if it's a small one man band, yeah. one woman band. There's, how do you push it out there? What, what's, the, uh, what's the methodology of getting the stuff out there to the businesses? Well, we have a good database there. We've had good contacts in with the councils. Um, but we find that uh, the STEM project has gathered momentum. We have got a bit of a, a following now. Um, businesses are aware of us. Um, so when we put our events out there, we would try and reduce um, the amount of postage we would send. Obviously, mm -hmm. we want to be as sustainable ourselves. Yeah, of course. So we would use a lot of emails and that type it's of way, um, that type mm -hmm. of form, and um, shows like yourselves yeah, to, you're so to reach to That's reach the audience. Mm -hmm. um, I, I should say as well, we are um, another. We did get further funding from Interreg, so See, are you we're covered for the next three years? Unfortunately, we're actually due to conclude next year with ah. our funding. So we are looking at other opportunities. Yeah, but yeah, inter interact. They can't. Europe can't just close the door on you. If you are succeeding to the extent you are succeeding, nature abhors a vacuum. If you're taken out of it, heaven only knows what will come into it. Yeah, we hope that we will have a good business case mm. there, and that some other funding body will see that there is potential because mm. there's there's such a need for it, and it has been such a a worthwhile project. Mm. And we're actually. Um, our lead partners are a local organisation here based in Newry, just a, Who are they a few doors down from yourselves. Oh, that's... East Border Region. East Border... Um, so I'd yes, I know them so very, very well. Uh, F uh, Fiona? No, we have um, Pamela Arthur. Pamela, there. yes, Pamela. And indeed. Det Hughes. Yeah. Yes, Det Hughes and Pamela. Yes, of course. And Good people all. Uh, absolutely, they have led the the project um, and are fantastic lead partners in any of these European funded yeah, yeah. projects. And then we have ourselves at Southern yeah. Group Environmental Health Committee. Tell when you say ourselves at Southern Group and Environment, what is that now? That's different from what you. We, it's different from STEM. The STEM project is just one project that Southern Group would deliver. So, so you're you're the Southern Group. What is it? even more confusing. <laughs> Southern Group Environmental Health Committee would work across five of our Southern area-based yes, councils. Got yeah. um, and within that portfolio is STEM. The STEM project, yeah. yeah you're not confusing me at all. I know, it's totally. all very straightforward, I, I tell you. But no, but that's, that's good. Now, if, fr from that portfolio, if I could ask you to paint me a picture of uh, one of your recent great successes, is there anything that comes to mind? Oh, we've had, uh, we've worked with over 150 businesses, so wow. um, you know, it, it's great to get the, the feedback from those mm. businesses. Is Conor McCreevy part of you? He's I know, I know of Conor, yes. Conor is a former councillor. And he's just established a new business, I believe. Has maybe. he? I think I might have seen something like I that. I must and contact him. 
because it, when he w wasn't returned to council, it was internal party politics that shafted him, so to speak. But he was one of the great councillors of our time, mm -hmm. Conor McCreevy. And he was taking the wisdom of his business, which was green, green and greener, really, mm -hmm. into the council chamber and was making a difference. It was a great loss for us. So it's my hope that Connor's new business and that his existing business will continue to grow and yeah. uh, do well. So what sort of things were um, your 150 bringing to you? Right, some of the, the good news stories, I suppose. Um, we, we identified that care homes were uh, a, particular, a particular business sector there that, in our opinion, hadn't really had much support. Um, and they have huge energy bills, um, mm. obviously with the nature of the, the care they give. So we've been working with quite a number of the, the care homes to try and help them I, yeah, reduce I think, their energy bills. I think of two things in relation to care homes. It's almost a 50-50 split. And maybe it reflects my periods of observation. I think first of all of converted big houses mm -hmm. with rattly Old windows. Probably listed buildings. Listed mm. and, and drafts coming mm. through the place and old people staggering around. And then I think of the modern and the They're fantastic, they're like hotels. <laughs> they like hotels, you know. I don't know of them all, but I certainly know there's one in Warren Point. Carlingford Lodge is very, mm -hmm. very good. And uh, the people there are so well treated. Uh, and it's state of, state of the art energy-wise, you know. There's no yeah. else about it. <clears throat> well, we've been working with a, a care home up in um, the Newcastle area. Yes. And they have, they've been very forward thinking, you know, really embracing the whole renewable end of things, um, putting in biomass boilers and solar panels. Now, and t do tell the people, I, I think I know, but do tell the people, and maybe me, what is a biomass boiler? Well, it's an alternative heat source. It would um, use renewable um, wood pellets, and there are a lot of incentives, particularly in the north of Ireland at the moment, for businesses yeah. to um, implement those type of uh, yeah. technologies. Would, would wood pellets not burn very, very quickly? You would need ten lorry loads of them, or not? I think um, part and parcel of having going down the biomass boiler is that you do need a bit of a storage area. Yeah. Um, although things have moved on quite a bit, and we, yeah. we have companies on the project that would provide mobile units that can be, you know, there's there's solutions yes. to everything these days. So, of course. Um, just you know, show show me the problem, and I'll show yeah. you an opportunity. And you know, five years down the line, we'll be even further. Absolutely. You know, and I had I had you know Narrowwater Castle there, the uh, uh, that place. Uh, the young, the young lord who runs it, uh, he he was going to have, he he farms cattle, so he was going to do what they do in India, mm -hmm. take the cattle manure, and mash it and whatever, and get the gas coming off it, yeah. and heat the place for. And rope digesters or. Yeah, absolutely. That's all possible, is it? Yeah, nowadays? yeah. We yeah. have um, a lot of interest in the project and all those technologies. So what we yeah. would do is. Um, either have a network session on that, so we have speakers mm. in, and mm. the, the businesses get to hear about these technologies and get to speak to the, you know, the experts on that technology. Yes. We'd yeah. even bring them out to a premise, the premises, and a business maybe has implemented the, the mm. technology they can see for themselves. Yeah. Um, so it's great learning on the project, and you know, businesses they're making savings. It doesn't always have to be a huge investment for mm. them. We're very much about. Um, resource efficiency first, you know, try and reduce what you're using at the moment yeah. before you start looking at renewable technologies even. Uh -huh. So even so what's, from What's monitoring. a bad practice that you're getting them to think twice about now? Um, well, we would probably encourage a lot of our businesses to actually um, monitor their energy, monitor their waste. And monitor. So simple. Yeah. Such a simple little tip can you know save a I, business. You know what I did this thousands. morning at four o'clock? I put my oil heating on, and guess what? I left the house at half past four. You forgot to turn it I off. I forgot to turn it off. I'm not going to sleep tonight knowing that. It's terrible, isn't it? Can you imagine doing the like of that? I know. But I'll, I'll scoot down quickly and turn it off. And uh, yeah. It. But it annoys me when I do things like I know. that. Yeah. I suppose if you were, if I was to give a tip to any of the businesses, um, and we we try and encourage them to do, is monitor what you're using. You yeah. can't manage it until you know what you're using, mm. and it's it's amazing the information that can bring to a business. You know, if they can take a picture of their mm. energy, for example, consumption over a week and track that, mm. um, and then they can see the peaks and troughs and they yes. can query reasons why. It, that's hugely interesting because I, I bumped into a fellow who was selling stuff and there was a lady with him as well. And he said to me, look, you come and you buy your electricity of us. And I said, well, blah, blah, blah. And now every 
every quarter I get a notification, would you please uh, submit a meter reading? Mm -hmm. And I go to the meter and I take the reading and I come back and I put my code in and I submit my meter reading. And then it says, you can view your energy usage um, in the present year. So you hit a button and you see the graph. And as you say, you identify the peaks mm -hmm. and you wonder why they're mm -hmm. there. Is that yeah. And that uh, if, if even an old, uh, an old codger like me can do that, yeah. it's there for everyone to do. Yeah. You know. Some of our businesses have identified that, you know, maybe there was uh, a, a bit of energy being used during the night when there was nobody on the premises. So it's, oh it's highlighted the yeah. fact that mm. there's lights being left on or something yeah. like that. So, you know, savings, it doesn't always have to be a huge investment in renewables. There can mm. be small things that businesses can do and just a bit more resource efficient, you know, printing double sided. Switching yeah. off lights when you leave Do the you office. Know and I, oh my the small God. things. I hate to admit this. I don't know how to print double sided. I really don't know how to print double sided. And there's something about I like when I print, I like to have quality paper there. So when I print, the feel as well as the reading of the words is good. Yeah. But I'm sure, I'm sure double-sided is a way forward. You're going to be thinking about that this evening now. You're not, you're, you'll think twice when, well, you, when you switch the heat on. You'll think twice when you're printing off. I'll you're pr I will. You've got, me <laughs> you've got me full of complex. When you go into your... Uh, I'll, talk to you, I'll talk to you about printer settings later. <laughs> printer settings? Yeah, and I'll, I'll show you how to, wow. get to print both sides. And someone was, uh, was staying with me, my father of Africa. He, we built schools in Africa, and in sub-Saharan Africa. And he was up staying with me for a while there, for a week. He was up meeting his supporters. And uh, he went into my computer and he... And suddenly my computer is going, yung, yung, yung. Instead of having all the icons on it that are there constantly, it just the icons fell off the screen. And these sort of la di da things on it. And that's apparently saving energy as well. It's no longer so much, yeah. doing it. Yeah. So broadly speaking, we're going the right way, are we? Yeah, um, I do think the businesses do need support. Um, yeah. They, you know, there is an interest there, but we we've seen from this phase of STEM started in two thousand and twelve with Interreg four M money, and we have seen businesses, you know, moving along that awareness curve from having considered renewables or resource efficiency before to actually starting to do, you know, make inroads into that and really making good savings, you know. Yes. Um, and we're bringing, we have an event here this week in Uri actually what for our business, for our businesses. It's called Green Biz 2014. Where's that happening? Just in the Canal Court. Straight well, across. Is that? And this Thursday morning. This so Thursday? Thursday all day. This, Thursday, this, 2nd this, of October. Wow, you want to be there for that. The yes. 2nd of October. So I'd encourage any um, businesses who are within the area. To and have you some businesses that you know are going to that? Oh, we have about almost 200 businesses Would you up. give me maybe three of those names or contacts and we will then, uh, we will then invite them onto the programme. And Absolutely. On Thursday morning they can come in. There's my yeah. details. Please ring me and we'll do that. And that yes, would be important. We'd be delighted to. Now in a moment I'm going to play you a wonderful piece of Phil Coulter. Now, the reason I'm going to, and Andrew, it'll be Heartland. The reason I'm going to play that to you is that tomorrow at this time, Phil Coulter will be sitting in that chair. Oh, lovely. There's wonderful musicality. A very good man. He's with me tomorrow. But before we go to Phil Coulter's Heartland, I'm going to read you one more little poem from Cecil Rajendra, my poet of Malaysia. My poet of Penang, really. He comes here. He's a wonderful human being. And again, he's, he's writing about the things that are important to you. Sustainable things, green, and making sure that we don't destroy things. I need to get things. a copy of this. <laughs> I think so. We can do this for you. On double. On double. Double. No other way. Emailed, actually. Email. Email. <laughs> now, here we go. The Death of the Dancing Flowers. Wow, what a title. I like it already. By Cecil Rajendra. There will be no more golden showers on this lane anymore. The regal flowers that rain their delicate yellow blossoms have been scythed down to make way for the new six-lane motorway. It's necessary too, I suppose. As ever, nature and beauty are sacrificed at the altar of development and expediency. Picking up two of these tutu-shaped blooms, my four-year-old daughter asks in wide-eyed wonderment, if it's true, that there'll be no more dancing flowers on our road anymore. And we're talking of a time too. Mm -hmm. I know we can do, well, we can do things about it. That bees are becoming extinct because of 
the way we're treating the planet. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, so there you are. Thank you for coming in. In pleasure. Thank you for having me in. We're going to play you now, Phil Coulter, and uh, it's Heartland.